Well, welcome back my friends for another fun reloading video. Today we're going to do a quick session here. I'm doing the 350 Legend with the Hornady 170 grain soft point. We're going to be using Shooter's World Heavy Pistol. I have brand new Starline brass that has been resized and we're using CCI 400 primers. So let's get to it. So we've got our number four shell holder stuck in here. It also works with your 223 and your 300 blackout. We're going to start by expanding out our our case mounts here because this is a straight wall cartridge like a pistol you have to bell that out before you can seat your bullet and here is our beautiful Hornady 170 grain soft point we'll see the slight bell on the case mouth you can barely feel it coming up the edge there but you can see that we're seating in there. We can get it straight and it'll barely start to stick so that's as much expansion as I want on my neck so I'm gonna go ahead and hit all of my cases here and we'll get on with it So now it's time to prime our brass. For that we're using the CCI small rifle number 400. We'll just take 50 of them out here without totally screwing it up on camera like usual. Oh, perfect flip, sorta, don't drop it. Oh God, okay, beautiful. Now we're using our Lee Ram Prime here. Beautifully seated primers, I'll tell you what now. Easy as pie. I'll be back with you here in a few. Only a few more here. And we will get to the throwing of the powder which I will be using my Uniflow for. We will be using the Shooter's World Heavy Pistol once again. And we'll be throwing 22 grains. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. But first, I'm going to set up my seating die so that once I dump powder, I can just go ahead and seat that bullet without worrying about spilling anything. Or I might do maybe like five in a row and then seat those. But that way, if I bump the tray, I'm not going to lose 50 uh, loads. I'm going to lo lose maybe five or three or whatever I'm doing at that time. So we'll get that set up here in a second. So to set up our seating die, we'll see our dummy round here plunks in and out of our gauge. And so we will set our die up to that. This die does have a crimping feature. However, I will be using the factory crimp die once I get them all seated. So now I can feel it touching the case of the mouth. We're gonna back it off about a half turn or so. Now we'll lower our seating stem till we feel it contact our bullet, which doesn't leave a lot of play in this die. But we'll start right about there, I can feel it. So I saved you the displeasure of dialing in the powder measure, but we're right on 22 grains. I did a five throw average and it's at 110.2, so that's pretty damn close. And really, I haven't shot this gun a lot, so I just want to load up some ammo and take it out for an hour or two and actually try and shoot a few groups and test myself with it rather than just trying a few loads with uh, some different bullets and mixing it up. So this will be kind of fun to have something to play with for a little longer than I have been. So let's get to it. That was the one I used to dial in the measure and uh, <clears throat> it's already full. <laughs> Jesus, what a mess. Okay, 22 grains. But that would have been really bad if I were using something else and I didn't realize I did that. Holy crap guys, be careful and stop making videos and being like an idiot on the internet because that's how you're gonna get blown up. I'm actually really fortunate that that caught that for me. Whoa. Some of you might not 
understand the graveness of that situation, but had that been like a uh, pretty stout load in a pistol, and then I double charged it, um, that could have been catastrophic. Sorry, this view really sucks. I don't know how to capture it properly, but I'm gonna just put these five first bullets on top here and then I'll get them seated. And we'll get on with the throwing of the powders and the seating of the bullets. And once I get them all seated, I will get back with you to crimp everything. So I'm just gonna try one first and then see what its overall length is compared to my dummy round. And then we should be good to go, but I just wanna make sure it's not you know, crazy out of spec or anything. So this guy is at two, two, four, five. Two, two, four, five. And let's check our dum-dum. Well, that one's clearly had some setback from running through the rifle. Ha! Look at that guy. Two point, uh, yeah, two eight. He's a little longer. I have one other dummy though, but I think I actually used to set the die up with, so. Yeah, that one looks better, 2.243. That one's close enough. I think we got our seating die close for today's purposes. So yeah, remember which dummy round you use when you're setting up your die. This one's good to go. We'll get it out of the way and get ready to seat these and crimp the rest later. Knock the bullet off of this one, uh oh. See, these rounds are really awkward because they're extremely top heavy when you put this bullet in the top and it's sitting two inches off the ground. And the cases don't weigh a lot. It's basically a blown out 5.56. So it's this little tiny case with this big, huge, heavy head and they tip over. So kind of a pain in the ass to do like 50 at a time here with the tray. So, you know, that's why I'm probably going to go to doing one at a time instead of five like I'm trying to right here because this is kind of meh. My workflow, I can't find my workflow. I'm fumbling around trying to get the one that I already sat on top and not next, knock, not knock the one over next to him. So anyways, we're going to back out here and do one at a time. Boop. I want to move these closer, you dummy. And I'm probably going to have to guide these in one at a time, all slow like. But it's all good, man. And your powder measuring technique, it doesn't matter if you tap twice, if you go real fast, if you go slow, as long as you do it every single time. That's what really matters on your powder measure. I just mentioned I couldn't find my workflow. It's messing me up. I got everything reorganized here. I'm grabbing my brass, I'm throwing the powder, I'm grabbing the bullet, and then I'm seating it, and then I take the full one back to where I'm grabbing the brass. Instead of going here and here and here, all over the place. Now it's bing, bang, boom. One, two, three, A, B, C, you and me. Yeah, girl. I don't think those are the lyrics to any song ever, but if you say them in the right order, it sounds like it. And I keep doing this where I'm gonna just try and go bullet and straight to seating, but you have to throw the powder first. Also be very aware of that and don't squib yourself, huh? Eh? That could be embarrassing. Powder. 
Don't drop your bullet and your powder at the same time, dummy. We need to just slow it down a bit. Even though it's past my bedtime, we gotta just reel it in. Slow and methodical. Yeah, it's much better. Just keep the same technique right here. Bang, bang. Slow, precise movements, much better. Much better. Okay guys, I'll see you here in a minute when I'm gonna crimp them. So here we are over at the crimping die. I have this first one ran up into it and we've just started to contact it there. Let's see where we end up in the chamber gauge. Well, looky there. It's still a little sticky on the way out. So I'm going to just barely come down there and we'll give this another try and make sure that lock ring is good and snug. And right in, and this one's right out. So I'm gonna test maybe the first five or 10 here, and then I'll just spot check them once I'm finally done. But uh, here we go. That one felt a little sticky. Yeah, so we'll come back down just a hair even though I really cranked her down. There we go. If you work it out on the first one over and over and over again, that brass will actually soften and eventually it'll fit. But here when you see this new piece of brass, um, it's only been hit once by the die and it has a little more spring back than when it gets pushed on three or four times when you're trying to set up. So it's important to check them after you're initially what you think would have been set up. So there we are. Now we're on number three and they're doing just grand. Four, I'll just go up to 10 here. Okay, that one's a little sticky again. I'll make sure my die's not walking. All right. Perfect. I'm not sure how much I like these newer Lee lock rings with the crazy gears. It just tears your fingers up. Trying to tighten them down. I know they make a silly little wrench, but why can't I use my silly wrenches that I already bought and paid for and have on hand? And I don't have to use their proprietary crap, huh? And I'm not certain how well the, they would fit on the Dillon, on those tool heads. But who knows? I think I got it snugged down pretty well. They're just barely sticking. I feel like it's creeping out on me, but I also bet... Um, I thought that I had trimmed and uniformed these, but I bet I didn't. So... I swear I did that. I swear I uniformed these. Hmm. Let me try it. Make sure, make sure it plunks. See how it's sticky? I bet this is actually dirty. <laughs> Let's try something real quick. We're gonna just kind of cotton swab the inside here. See if we don't have any greases or oils. Get that shelf where it headspaces off of. Well, would you look at that? It fell so fast, I freaking dropped it. Wow, incredible, dummy. Clean your stuff and it'll freaking work for you. What an idiot. I hope you guys can learn something from my stupidity. It's still a little sticky. I'm gonna come down a little bit more. Okay, 
Dang, those get tight. All right, a little more, Jesus. Okay, that feels like I'm really crimping into it now. Well, it works. And I guess I could have moved you back. Here we go. So anyways, let's try one more. Because I feel like that's a, a pretty medium heavy crimp. And since we're head spacing off of our neck here, um, you don't want to crush that. Or then you fall below the space. Right in, right out. It's totally past my bedtime, you can tell. But I'm almost done here. And then we'll double check with the gauge. And there you have it, folks. We have sufficiently plunked and tested all of our rounds here through our gauge. We've got 50 of them loaded up for a fun blasting range day. I'll be able to actually get some target practice maybe and work on my own technique rather than trying to see which other variables I can change and screw up. So anyways, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this sort of content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Also go and check me out on Instagram. You'll get to see pictures and stuff as it's going on before I get it edited and sent to YouTube. So that can be kind of fun as well. But anyways, thanks again. We will see you in the next video. Have a good one.